Well, hello and thank you for coming. I see some familiar faces and some new faces. And for those of you who are the familiar faces, I'm going to do a quick recap of kind of how we got here and then talk about this new approach to uh, literacy, public awareness, and action. Um, Valerie's absolutely right. Uh, many people think of public awareness and marketing campaigns as let's tell our story. And as a marketing person, I came in and said, no, maybe that's not what we're going to do. Well, let's hear their story and then craft a message that explains how we fit in with that. So the whole thing got turned around initially. And we're going to say, we're not going to talk about us. We're going to talk about all of the people who are the, the core of this, this program as participants, the learners and the tutors. Now, we did not neglect the funders, the library supporters, the managers, and others who need to really understand and, if you will, get literacy programs. Um, but we started with understanding the reality of the tutors and the learners. And because, again, I took a marketing approach to this, I wanted to ask all of the dumb questions, the things that you know in your bones already about what's important and what works and how, how this makes sense and how it integrates with other services. I got to ask all of the, well, tell me one more time what it is that, about this sort of new person questions. And whether you think fresh eyes and dumb eyes are the same thing, uh, it was a useful way to get on the table some of the things that everyone takes for granted when we're talking amongst ourselves, but aren't necessarily articulated when we're out there with, again, civilians, people who aren't part of our program. So first thing we did after a little bit of consciousness raising and education for me and consulting with a great steering committee with some really active participants is we went to the people. And uh, we had a market survey period when we had one-on-one -on -one interviews with both tutors and learners asking how they heard about the program, what made them finally decide to come into the program, and what their experience of the program had been. And this whole market data gathering was quite similar to the sorts of product interviewers that you meet out at the mall, clipboard style, one-on-one -on -one interviews with the intent of capturing in their own words discussion of the experiences that our participants were having. One of the things that I find when I work with library groups is we're always editing civilians to make them sound more like librarians. And we take the way they talk and we turn it into the way we talk. And a key to a market message that really resonates is having it be a language that is the native language of the, the hearer. So we said, don't just uh, click off a, a pre-selected box. Don't just say, well, I think that here's what they meant. Give me the exact words, verbatim if you can, of the people who are participating in these programs so we can understand their story and the way they tell their story. We got an incredible, wonderful, delightful, rich collection of these first-person comments available in more than 100 pages of verbatim transcript. So anyone who is interested in immersing in what people have to say about literacy programs in California, there's a lot of raw data. Then was to look at that and say, what does this say? What does this mean? What about this could be used to craft a message? And a number of very important things came through. Let me start with the learners. It turns out that learners come into these programs, and you're going to nod your head and go, oh, yeah, I knew that. But listen, it turns out that learners come into these programs almost always with a personal referral. It's a friend. It's a family member. It's uh, somebody else they know who's been through the program that they run into. And somebody actually says, no, actually, it, was, it worked for me, or I think it's good. They get a personal testimonial and maybe a little bit of a personal kick in the you know. Um, we had first person uh, comments, people saying, well, you know, my wife was on me all the time and I finally did it. Um, that tells me that motivation for many folks has to do with the support of the people around them. There was also a, a large cluster around referrals that schools sent people. They said, well, our program may not be exactly right for you, but there is a program we think would be a good match. Um, and uh, sometimes work was a good way for people to find out about this. Workplace programs seemed to be quite effective. So we had the, the people you know, the people you think might help you but aren't necessarily a good match who are giving you the referral. And then a very interesting finding early on 
One of the ways adults found out about literacy programs was by taking their children to the library. Adults who are good candidates as learners for your programs already recognized that the enrichment of children's programs at the library was a good thing, was a free thing. And so they're taking their kids to the children's activities and finding out that literacy opportunities are available there. This, for me, opens up a very interesting channel about can we get some training, can we get some talking points, can we get some preparation for a children's librarians to conclude children's programming with saying, as you see from our programs, all your parents in the audience, we really embrace, we celebrate books and learning, we think reading is so important, and we do a lot in this library to support that, and here's a couple other things you might be interested in. Um, would you like a side of literacy with that? Uh, so uh, the number of people who reported finding out about these programs through their children's participation in the library was an eye-opener for me and I think can result in some interesting sorts of development and outreach so that you're not the only ones carrying your message in a library setting. So the trigger point is something personal. Somebody says, no, I think this would work for you. The value proposition, now I'm speaking marketees, but the, the, the thing that the tipping point, like what's in this for me, is a very interesting one. Because I'm, I'm, I'm overgeneralizing here, but I think it's fair to say that many people who are good candidates for literacy services have tried other learning techniques and not had them work out for them. They've tried traditional school. They may have tried other kinds of classroom settings. They've tried self-directed things. They've tried some stuff. And it hasn't been the right match. And so what is it that this time makes me think it's going to be any different? Why should this be a choice that I can believe in when these other choices haven't been productive for me? Or am I just looking at, at Lucy getting ready to pick up the football and have me miss it one more time? What happens here when we look at the first person data is time after time after time, all of the participants talk about how much they value the relationships they develop as part of this program, particularly the tutor learner relationship. And we saw that on both sides. So here we have the core of what makes this different. Your product is relationship-based learning. This is what makes you different in the marketplace. This is what makes you successful when others have failed. This is what you can tell someone is why you should give this a try, because it is a different approach. Now, if we're going to talk about relationships, we're going to do some things in marketing terms. We're never going to show a picture of just one person who's a participant in the literacy programs. We're always going to show illustrations of people in pairs, in groups, in relationship to one another. You see the difference? Your key is the strong relationships between participants. We need to exploit that in all of the marketing message. The other big thing that came through, and I, I'm a lifetime library person, and so I wasn't entirely surprised by this, but you know what, what the answer to the question, what surprised you the most was? They were so friendly. They were so nice. Not just, yeah, I noticed that. That surprised me. They were so friendly. They were so nice. We're working against the mean old school teacher broad stereotype, and we're working against the mean old library broad stereotype. And these are people who are absolutely stunned that we had a sense of humor, that we were nice to them, that there are parties and events, with the, you know, that there was a social element to this, and that it was enjoyable. Now, you can't actually create a marketing campaign around, we're not as mean as you thought. <laughs> um, but again, when we put the public face of literacy out there, we need to put out a face that looks friendly, maybe looks a little bit more informal than they expect. Um, the, the, the surprise element for, for learners and instructors and for tutors was that this was actually a friendly crowd of people who appeared to be having a good time doing this. And I'm, I'm not sure we're going to go to the you know, disco party style commercial, 
But I, I think it was revealing to me that people's conceptions about what to expect from the library, what to expect from a literacy program, um, could be so easily addressed by positioning ourselves around who we actually already are, but telling the story in that way. So you're going to see a lot of emphasis on relationship. You're going to see a lot of emphasis on friendly. And you're not going to see any emphasis at all on the word literacy. You need to call your programs what you need to call them. And that word tests very well with funders, because that's considered a respectable and sound investment. However, amongst tutors and learners, literacy, the L word, is not the best recruitment tool. Now, this may sound a little too uh, persnickety for some people, but I'm, I'm going to try to be very clear with this. The term of art to describe what a learner experience is, is I get help with my reading. And there's two important things about this. Get help, that's what's going on. Not I need help, I get help. It's, it's actually being delivered to me. And it's my reading. It's not I need help with learning, it's I get help with my learning, with my reading. And they say I, I, I get help with my reading, I get help with my math, I get help with my spelling, I get help with my grammar. But the I get help with my, is uh, in, it's a marketer's dream, it occurred so often in the verbatim data. This is the way people describe it. And so that's the way you deliver that friendly service is you give people help, you provide help with their possessive reading, spelling, learning. That's what you do. Okay? Relationship-based learning by giving help with fill in the blank. And those words need to be on the t-shirts, on the coasters, on the whatever. That is in fact how this gets expressed. We had lots of people tell us about then particulars that value, you know, that they valued highly, that it was one-on-one, -on -one, that it was personal to them, they set their own pace, they set their own schedule, and that um, it was the people who are working with them were patient, were supportive, who clearly were not measuring them against a particular outside standard as much as helping them so they wouldn't fail. Again, we're back to the relationship. I finally found a person who wanted me to succeed, and they knew how to make that happen. So we're around that. When you look at the tutor side of things, you hear a lot of the same kind of verbiage. I like helping people. I'm glad to make a difference. It's really important to me that I can see progress. And you know, I'm working with this person one-on-one, -on -one and we have some flexibility. It's not all by rote. So similar kinds of values. Intriguingly, the tutors, every one of them said it was the most rewarding experience. And the word that came out more than any other was rewarding. That they're getting back as well as giving back. The trigger points for tutors many times were also personal. If a friend was doing it or they knew somebody who said, no, I think you'd be good at this, there were some personal things. But one of the things we found with the, uh, the um, tutors, many of them looked to a volunteer experience, particularly a, a tutoring opportunity, at a point of some life change. They've retired, they've lost a spouse, they've graduated from school, they've moved to a new location, they have made a life change. And for whatever reason, good or bad, part of that life change for them has been in a personal assessment around what kind of member of my community am I? Am I actually making a difference in this world? Is there something I personally can do to give back if I'm feeling that I've, I've managed to have a good life and, and enjoyed the benefits of, of my circumstances? Is there some, some thing that makes it possible for me to participate? Because it's an identity-defining moment. So this leads us into 
places where people have uh, engaged these life experiences, you know, and obviously we've looked at seniors and retirement connections, you know, as a traditional way to recruit, but we haven't looked at realtors selling people new houses. We haven't looked at college placement offices, you know, talking to students who've just graduated about how they're going to spend their work life and whether they're going to balance that with other kinds of things now. So anytime someone is having a personal transition, good or bad, they may be doing the kind of introspective thing that opens them to participating in this kind of experience. They tell us it is so rewarding. Many people who've tried other kinds of volunteer work said there's no way anything compares with this. I can do something myself and I can see the difference immediately. And the people are eager for my services. They're eager to be in relationship with me. They want to learn, and I can help them. I can make that happen. And that, um, that eagerness on the part of the learners came up over and over and over again. And we give a heck of an opportunity for people who want to feel needed and appreciated. And I, to a person, they said, well, you know, you, you act like I'm giving a benefit by doing this tutoring, but I have to tell you, I'm getting way more out of it myself because it's so rewarding. So we're looking at a relationship basis for tutoring. We're looking at people at life uh, turning points in their lives, and they're really ready to, to, to do something that they can see the results of one-on-one. -on -one. None of this is surprising. Now, there are a couple of other points that I think are point of view things that, that came out that, that I think we'll bear in mind as we move forward. Um, just like the traditional way of calling our stuff literacy, and if you look at all the flyers and brochures and ads, literacy is always prominently featured. So I already told you we have to throw that out. Well, there's something else I think we have to throw out based on what people told me. And that's to spend less time on telling everybody how great it will be after they already know how to read. A lot of the testimonials and the first person reports we use, the featured learners, of the you know, when we take somebody, again, when you're going to ask for funding, taking a person who's been successful in your program to say, I was a 97 pound weakling before and now I'm Joe Atlas uh, reader, um, this is good because the before and after is part of that sales pitch to the powers that be. But when you're recruiting, you do not want to say to somebody, and I, I thank Carla for the example when we were discussing this, you don't want to say to somebody, yes, you're overweight now and wouldn't it be wonderful if you were skinny? And to have that be your pitch, <laughs> because these people are. The pitch is, is we are with you. We are going to support you through this process. We have figured out a process that actually results in people losing weight, and we'll be with you every step of the way. And let's talk about that process and why it's different from some of the things you might have tried in the past. And once you, this light bulb goes on, you go back and look at the public relations materials that have been used nationally, locally, whatever. It's all directed toward that funding mentality of, isn't it great when we're all done? And the middle process is all just, and then a miracle happens. <laughs> you know, it's a black box. You come into our program one way, you come out of our program another way, but we don't discuss what the experience will be like. It's very important in recruitment, in the action step that you want people to take, to say, all right, look at, here's what's going to happen, and here's people talking about how that felt for them, acknowledging whether they were scared at first, and then they went there, and the people were friendly, and so it was nice, and to, to let folks know what it will be like as they go along, rather than leap forward to the thing they already know, is it would sure be great if I already knew how to read. So the product of relationship-based learning, the process of relationship-based learning, the fact that personal encouragement is a big part of this starts to feed into what do we do next. We recraft our message to highlight these things, and we recraft our technique to reincorporate the personal touch. It's my opinion as your marketing advisor that it's that personal invitation that is the strongest possible recruitment tool. So we want to arm ambassadors to go out there and recruit for us. 
Everybody we can get our hands on through the programs associated, we need to prepare them to be able on a, on a dime, on a moment's notice, to identify and recruit someone who would be a learner or a tutor who could benefit from this program. And they have to have a little card with talking points, and they have to have the confidence that it's their job, that they're, we're encouraging them. We may want to give prizes for the person who brings in the most new faces, I don't know. But we need to make a, a core, a cadre of ambassadors. I think it also came through in our conversations with uh, tutors particularly, that it's a big, big, big time commitment to be a tutor. If you're going to do it right, you have to be serious about it, and it, you have to be consistent, and you have to make time in, in your schedule. There are people who would like to support what we do who aren't quite sure they're ready to make that amount of commitment. And we need to identify opportunities for them to support us and assist us on a volunteer basis, even if they're not tutoring. And recruiting is one of those spots. Recruiting is one of the ways somebody could be an active participant in the program on their own time without the same sort of scheduling and time commitments that tutoring require. So we have to, to find a, a little message and have other people take it out there. Uh, even I, I agree that uh, print advertising and TV and radio spots can have been helpful to some people in the past, but even so, they're the means to the end. Somebody hears the TV spot and they say, hmm, and then a friend of theirs says, dude, just, you got to do it. I'll drive you over there. And there's a little bit of, I'll drive you over there. There's a transportation component as well. And there's another volunteer opportunity that says, Maybe there are people who, when they give a talk, offer to give a ride. Just that extra tipping point to say, no, I believe in you. I'm going with you. I'll support you while you do this. These people won't let you fail. So I think the um, long you know, term perspective here is some of the work you have to do recruiting could, could become network marketing, could, could fan out a little bit into a broader audience. So I want to talk about a couple of things we're going to do to make this happen. Um, much good feedback came from the people who participated in the survey activities to say, don't just come out with one big slogan and a bunch of TV spots, because that's a flash in the pan, and we've done that before. We've been there, we've done that. Why not create some tools that we can use on an ongoing basis that make use of this new information? So the concept now is to develop a literacy, public awareness and action toolkit. Materials that will be available online that you can download and use as is, plug in your information, tweak them a little bit, understand what, what's there as a template and, and adapt it as needed, but to have some of the legwork done for you. And one of your handouts uh, today is a list of things that we're pretty clear are going to go in that toolkit for starters. And we're imagining the toolkit as a living, breathing, uh, evolving set of resources. So we're talking about a slow rollout, starting to just put things up as they become available and keep you alerted to new materials that are coming out that you can use as a model. As a tiny preview, and please, a tiny preview, two documents or handouts, they're the things with the pictures that are in front of you. I want to talk about this is the kind of thing in some form, not necessarily this format, that we're talking about putting up on the toolkit. Let's look at the one that says get help with your reading. Mm -hmm. Again, if you don't put any other words on anything else you're going to do, use this phrase, get help with your reading. That's the crux of, of what we're going to say. That works the best to get people into your programs. And then the points under here, look how much space is devoted to happy people participating with each other in your program. Try not to ever show one person by him or herself. We want multiple people. They need to look happy. <laughs> They need to look like they might even be laughing or having a good time. And it's best if they're sort of related to one another in the picture and not just looking out at the camera like I'm posing for somebody, OK? We're, we're, we're modeling this relationship-based learning. That's the story you're trying to tell, OK? 
We're also um, making plenty of, of uh, white space around. And, and these points are on the back of this document. If you're looking at it, I, I, all these talking points are, are listed on the back. Um, we, we also, uh, you know, we're trying to give people a flavor of what it will be like for them and who we are. And if who we are is supposed to be friendly, you can't just write on your flyer, and by, we're friendly. So you have to convey that in some other way. You have to show the friendly people in the pictures. One of the reasons I, I chose these pictures, I didn't have a lot to work with when I was doing this because most of the pictures that are out there are one person. So in looking at some twosies, I looked at these. These folks at least look like they're not having a bad time. The other thing I liked about these pictures is you can't tell immediately who's the tutor and who's the learner. And I, I gave this test to my husband, too. I said, OK, you tell me who's who here. And it wasn't instantly apparent. And I think that's useful, too. It could be anybody. So as diverse a group as we can get, uh, age, clothing style, gender, whatever, it's, it's useful to get a real mix of people. And this we're friendly thing in this particular example is conveyed by a little bit of silliness. The, and did we mention that it's free? You know, just a, a quick, or the casualness over on the right-hand side, drop by for a visit. You know, that, that we're trying to indicate a, an openness, a hospitality. These, these things are very deliberate in marketing terms. So if you think the point of any of this is to convey information, you're wrong. The point of this is to convey relationship-based learning and the personality, the experience that they're likely to have. The rest of it is just detail because you have to fill up the page. It is more important to have the smiling pictures than the phone number. It is more important to talk in when you're talking about the, the program as if you were a person, us, we, our, than to say the program, you know, to, to personalize that. That's the message you need to get out first. And I have a good friend who works in the, the parks area who says you have to catch them before you can skin them and grill them. This is not all the information you would ever provide about your program, but if we're talking about recruitment, this is the kind of thing we start with. So what we're going to do with the, the toolkit is put out examples. Use these words. Here's a phrase. Lay it out like this. Make this part bigger. So that whatever you're adapting at home, if you don't want to use exactly the format that's there, you can still give something to a graphic artist, or you can, you can put the principles to work and know why they are that way, uh, and, and capture the, the spirit of it, if not the exact verbiage. Let's look at the other one. It's very similar. I, I cheated. I used the exact same two pictures because tutors and learners together look like tutors and learners together. But here's what I think the phrase is going to be for the campaign on the tutor side. Share the gift of reading. That verb, share, is the crux. This is an intrapersonal relationship. This is not a um, patron, donor, lady bountiful conferring a benefit to the subordinates. This is a shared experience. And the value is reciprocal. So that word is extremely important. And note that on both of these, it says, at the library. Um, OK, that's my librarian's plug. Somewhere, we're going to say, at the library. And if you're across the street, maybe it's near the library. I don't know. But it, we have to get the at the library in there. If you look on this one, the, the personality, it can be conveyed a little more succinctly. And the why is this? volunteer opportunity a little different from the other ones I may be considering. And so you actually put a little sales pitch on this one. It's on the bottom of the left, and then again on the top on the right. Be part of your community. Many people said those words, I wanted to be more of a part of my community. Many of them said to us, you know, I met people who live in this town that I never would have met any other way. I have my own circle, I have my own people, I had my own rut, and this program showed me there's a whole lot of other stuff going on in my community. And there are folks who want to embrace that, who want to be more of a part, and who want to make that real difference, especially the boomers. If you're looking at the boomer age responses on this, they want to do volunteer work that has a payoff. <laughs> and they want the payoff to be pretty immediate and pretty personal and pretty direct. 
Um, so that's your sales pitch. You will see a difference. You will see progress. And the same thing on the top over here. Um, these people are, are ready to learn, they're eager to learn, and you can help. You can help. I, um, you know, I'm with Uncle Sam, this means you. <laughs> uh, but uh, it, there's a call to action here, not just a, this is our phone number, it says call us. Not just this is our address, come by. Okay, we're gonna ask them to do something very specific. Hmm. As we go, the plans are to develop a number of tools and templates that you can take and use. And I'm thinking of a handy dandy phrase generator. I was playing with this the other night that said, here are 10 phrases you ought to use. You know, work these in somewhere. Definitely talking points. Whenever you're interviewed, be sure to say these three things no matter what else you're doing. Um, to, so that you won't get caught short. You'll have raw ingredients. Um, somebody suggested that we ask the list of questions that an interviewer should ask you. So that if you're invited to a radio talk or something, you can hand a list of questions to the interviewer to serve those nice ones right over the center of the plate so you can give the answers you want to get out there. Okay. So let's give you a little test as a group here. What's your product? Okay, yeah, with, with conviction, all right? And what is it that actually brings people in it's a personal invitation or recommendation. It's somebody has to talk to them and say, you, you, particularly because you're you and uniquely you, I think you'd be a good match for this program. And by the way, we're fun and friendly and we have a party at Christmas, okay? And I, trust me on this, the amount of surprise they registered that we was friendly, we were friendly, it was so surprising. <laughs> Um, that there, we can't do too much. And I don't mean you have to wear like a clown nose to the office, unless you want. Uh, but uh, if, if you have an opportunity to seem a little laid back and that you're passionate and enjoying this work and you can show two people, tutor and learner, giggling together, you're probably gonna get a different kind of recruitment than if you just try to lay out lots of facts. Hmm? So those are the big issues. We're talking about only showing relationships and only discussing what the users experience and the rest filling in behind that. And the tools for that and the phrases for that and the templates for that are part of what's gonna go on this toolkit that you'll be able to download when you need them, where you need them, and uh, plug in the values that, that you have.